The executive mansion gets its name after the British. Still sore about losing the American Revolution, torched the building during the War of 1812. The outer walls end up so blackened by fire and smoke that the repair crews paint them white, inspiring the name White House. Fortunately, the fire doesn't destroy the interior, and the rooms are exactly as they were 200 years ago. There are more myths in that account than Secret Service snipers on the White House roof. Starting with how the White House got its name. The Redcoats did burn it down, and the painters did whitewash it later. But it had been painted white as early as 1798, and the nickname has been around almost as long. The exterior walls of the mansion are constructed of Akea Creek sandstone, which is a very beautiful light gray stone, and that would have been the original color of the house. However, it's also a very porous stone, and it began to discolor right away. And so they were already applying coats of whitewash to it, which is why the name White House progressively became more popular, even though people were supposed to call it the executive mansion. And in case you're wondering, it takes 570 gallons of paint to do the job right. But at least that's all the work crews need to repair the White House after the fire, since the interior wasn't damaged. Veto that idea. The fire is so destructive that only the exterior walls remain. It takes repair crews three years to fully restore the building. The first president to enjoy the remodel is James Monroe. And that's the White House that the tourists visit to this day, where they can walk through the same historic rooms and hallways as Lincoln and FDR. When you look at the White House today, the only original part of the house that you're actually seeing is the outer walls. Everything that exists when you step in the front door dates to 1950. In 1948, 130 years since the White House was reconstructed, Harry Truman notices that the place is falling apart. Ceilings are sagging, plaster dust cascades from above, and bathtubs and pianos threaten to fall through the floor. So Truman orders that the inside of the White House be rebuilt. And starting in 1949, the interior is quietly and completely gutted. Truman wanted to protect the public from knowing how bad it had gotten. So for example, uh, they had to get a bulldozer in there. The bulldozer had to be taken apart, moved into the White House, and rebuilt so it could do its work, because Truman would not allow them to knock a hole in the White House big enough to drive the bulldozer through so it could get in there. 